I have been living with this uninvited power for the past five years. I have vowed never to tell anyone. On hindsight, it was the best decision, but it's too late now. I'm living with HIV, I said. With one voice, they laughed. How can such a handsome, well-built guy be one of them? The certificates made all the difference. Judges, the jury, prosecutors, they all became. My job is almost on the line. A byword and reproach have become to my family. For friends, the least talked about, the better. What has changed, I asked. As I sit in the cell of my isolation, it's life worth living. I wonder, and all I did wrong was to disclose my status. Studies have clearly shown that there are three major epidemics that we are fighting. The first one is the HIV, which comes into the society unnoticed and silently. The second epidemic is the eighth stage, where people get all the symptoms and they get sick and they cannot do anything at all. The third is the level of stigma and discrimination in the country. We have done a lot of work in trying to address the pandemic in society, but stigma and discrimination is still very high. And therefore, it was necessary for us to find a way of addressing it. And that is why we decided this time around that we should do the stigma reduction campaign using the theme, who are you to judge? to draw attention of people to the fact that all of us are vulnerable and each and every one can even get the virus. So there is no need for us to point fingers at people who have the HIV and AIDS. We all should receive them and treat them just like any one of us. And this is what has informed our current stigma reduction campaign. issues of stigma and discrimination uh, might not be very apparent. They are very sensitive matters when you come to communicating on HIV and discrimination. So there was, there was a need to hold a forum. It wasn't more of teaching, it was more of idea sharing. And, and so we would impart what we know about stigma and discrimination, how that is impacting our national response. And then they would translate what we have said into an art form that will be appreciated by all in, in, in the response. That basically was, was the idea to bring them together for a short period, maximum two days, take them through the issues of stigma and discrimination and let them use their ingenuity to transform the messages that we want to come out clearly into art forms and, and present these art forms to, to the general public. All of you are artists, so at the end of these two days when you start your artwork, how are you going to conceptualize non-stigmatizing behavior so that the ordinary man on the street, when he or she sees your artworks, can understand that this is relating to a non-stigmatizing behavior related to HIV AIDS. Stigma is high in Ghana against HIV AIDS and it's affecting a lot of things. Jacob has been calling stigma, stigma, stigma. What is stigma? We want to reduce stigma, so if you don't understand what stigma is, then half of the work will not be done. I want each individual of you to write your understanding of what stigma is. One person is saying that isolation, rejection, wrong perception, neglect, maltreatment, all the ways. We have exhausted what stigma is, from isolation to discrimination. So to summarize, we will state UNA's definition of stigma, which is a process of devaluation of people either living with or associated with HIV and AIDS.
Well, I came into this workshop with basically little or no idea as to what stigmatization was. Uh, stigmatizing people living with HIV. But then the workshop really brought out a lot in me in terms of reflecting upon the fact that there are people living with HIV and that they go through every day of emotional, psychological and physical you know, um, torture of people stigmatizing them. A chance for me to reflect on the fact that um, people living with HIV are just like you and I, you know. Um, the, the only difference is that maybe they've got the virus and they've been able to come out to tell us that they have the virus. So instead of stigmatizing them, what we need to do is to give them the support that they need. So for me, it's, it's, it, it's, it really affected my work in terms of being able to translate what I have absorbed from the workshop into um, artistic language. This very piece I have entitled Stitch, Stitching It Up. It's out of the fact that in the past, probably we're ignorant and we stigmatized, you know, people living with HIV. Now we've come and we've gotten the knowledge. We've gotten the knowledge, so what do we do? Let's bring all those pieces together and then stitch up wrongs that we have done. Then, and from now on, let it be at the back of our minds that they are just like you and I. So there's no need for us to stigmatize them, but rather give them the love and support that they need. Yeah. In the two days training that preceded this art workshop, I was exposed to rich knowledge and information about AIDS and of course HIV. At the workshop, I was privileged also to meet um, somebody living with HIV. And in fact, I must say that was the climax of the workshop for me as an individual. Prior to that, I had little knowledge about HIV AIDS and I thought I knew so much. I, knew so much. I realized that people living with HIV are as normal as we and of course it can happen to anybody. So I decided that okay let me bring out this sketch just uh, depicting or expressing somebody who is sorrowing and is being consoled by another person. You know here is somebody who has just assuming that the person has heard the news and he's down. So he's being consoled by another person who is well. On this board, here is another person again, an able person. This one is down with the disease and this man is just lifting him. And of course I have so many, you can see so many blacks at the background. That is to show what my mind was before the time. And I called my board kindness. I'm talking about stigmatizing of PLHV. And it's like we had this two days workshop on stigmatization. You could see a figure standing who is with HIV virus. And those around him are trying to console him. Brethren, if you still have it, we're still there with you. That's what you see. I've come to realize those time, like there wasn't any pity for anybody. I don't pity no man. Why? Because uh, I feel everything just happened. But after the small workshop of thought, uh, I became to know, no, Charlie, after all, we need to, like, reason before we act. I call this painting Community of One. Why do I call it Community of One? We see a Kuaba interlocking themselves, which shows human beings trying to get together, just to put away, stigmatize. You know, like you see here, you can't point to me who is an HIV. Yes, they are all in a laughable mood.
before I came for the workshop, I was like, anyone living with HIV, it's, it's, it's supposed to be excluded or the person, I perceive the person to be immoral. Therefore, the person shouldn't be given the needed attention. Uh, but through the workshop I had with Jaika, I realized that there's a lot of things that go into that go into understanding what the disease is really about. I came to understand that people living with HIV AIDS are humans like us. They deserve all the love, the care. And this has really influenced my work because now I find myself painting with a clear understanding that we need to show love, we need to show appreciation, we need to unite. That's why I have the symbol, a symbol of unity. The Dem Chen Funefu, which means two crocodiles having the same stomach. So that's the head, and the other head is here. They eat differently. They have two different heads, meaning they eat differently. But every, all the food they eat enters into one stomach. And I believe that music is a way of sending forth message to the society. So I have a, a man, um, you know, engrossed in his music. And on top of him, he's sending a message of love to people living with HIV. That's the symbol of, you know, AIDS. And it's telling us that no matter what it is, no matter how bad the situation can be, that's why I have a whole bag black background over here no matter how bad the situation can be we can always shine by uniting and showing love so when i was coming into the workshop i had different ideas and unfortunately i myself i could see myself also some of the one of those who used to stigma this work is one of my first work i did on that from starting from the Wednesday that we started the practical of this workshop, which I tried to bring out us to reach out to show affection, to show love, care, and support to those people who are living with HIV AIDS. When you look at this, all this one by one represent human being, being a doctor, being a lawyer, being a military, being a, a, a imam or pastor or anything that you can be, a student or anything. And the only one person at this middle was the only person who was living with HIV. And when you look at this bottle, I, titled, I put this bottle there because they have what they call ARV, which was those things that every the whole world now knows as what can able to give them more life, let their life be stable, and because when the advert was always done, it's like you see people on the TV having bones, skeleton, something like that. But now when you see them taking these drugs, they look healthy. It's hardly for you to know who is living with HIV or who is not, which is with and without. That is what this work is all about. It's with and without. And when you look at these ropes, you can see that it started from the person living with HIV and it spread its wings all around. And when you look at this, it's each of people here putting their hands, joining themselves together and holding him, embracing her, and holding her like, we are part of you. We are one. And that is unity. I must say that this workshop has really helped me to understand much, much more about HIV than I thought I knew. When I came, well, I came with a little knowledge, but I must say that I'm living with much more and I'm making every effort not to be a stigmatizer, not only to people who've got HIV, but to anybody at all. I'm learning that there's no need to stigmatize people. My first work was depicting a question mark. It was a very big question mark, which had so many people inside it. The whole idea was that, who are you to judge? And that was a big question mark. I mean, who am I to judge? Who are you to judge? Who are we to judge? somebody who is HIV positive. We had a lot of um, activities and interactions 
the one who was teaching us would just ask us to do certain things to keep us awake. So we learned some games and one of them, when she says me one, you embrace yourself. When she says me two, you find someone to embrace. When she says me three, you try and embrace three people. Me four and so on and so forth. So from this, I got this idea of me three, like three people embracing. And it still comes back to the same idea. You cannot get the virus by embracing a person living with HIV. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for coming to this exhibition tonight. This workshop started last two weeks when we started with the Stigma Training Project. And after the two days, we had eight days of art making, if I should put it that way, with the ideas that we've put forward about trying to minimize or even stamp away um, stigma in our society, these works will speak to you directly or indirectly so that we can make a step forward in the right direction by putting this out of our society. Thank you all for coming and enjoy your evening. <laughs>